Howdy everyone. It is Saturday, February the 25th, 2023, and this is my look ahead to New Comic Book Day next week on Wednesday, March 1st, 2023. It looks to be another very big week. It could be a 20 plus issue week again, so if you are a collector, this is a great time, but I hope your wallet is ready because it's it's going to hurt. I'm going to jump right into it, and then we'll talk about my uh, thumbnail and why I have these books um, displayed out. So uh, we'll get to that. All right, first we're going to start with Independence coming out. AWA... Once uh, AWA Upshot puts out Red Zone, number one. This is by Colin Bunn, and Colin Bunn has been tearing it up, and he's a really good writer. So normally I would kind of skip on this thing because it's kind of a, uh, it looks like it's a cop type, mystery type book, possibly. And it's not exactly my thing, but Colin Bunn is writing it with Mike Diodato Jr. on art, and I love his artwork. So, based on that, I'm going to be picking up this Red Zone number one from AWA. Um, Blood Moon Comics is putting out this uh, interesting book called Titan Mouse of Might. And you see on the cover here, I don't. How are they getting away with that? That looks like Batman's costume, right? So this is like a bat mouse. But I saw this from Blood Moon, and I immediately went on to mycomicshop.com and I ordered two copies of number one because this is so quirky. A mouse that looks like Batman. I can totally see this going somewhere. Um, some kind of an animated cartoonish type thing or something. I can, I, I mean, I can really see that. So I went back and I picked up two copies for cover price of number one. And if, if my shop has this, then I'll buy it. Number two, it seems like it might be pretty obscure though. But sometimes this obscure stuff like this will surprise you. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. I'm going to pick that up and read it. And I'm going to read number one when I get it. If nothing else for the novelty of it, you know, a Batman mouse. Yeah. All right, next is, um, this one's from Dark Horse, Dark Horse Comics. And this is an awesome looking cover in the, uh, the solicitation on this one, this is Skull and Bones, Savage, so uh, Savage Storm, number one. And this is another one of those video game adaptation books. And we all see what saw what happened with uh, The Last of Us. Now, I'm not saying or suggesting that this is going to be the next The Last of Us. But I'm also not going to suggest that it's not, Right? So absolutely, I'm definitely going to be picking this one up. And it's a pretty cool sounding story, like pirate, two faction, um, two rival faction pirate organizations or something get stranded on an island and something, uh, something along that after the storm. It sounds cool. It's going to be a video game as well. And if the video game is good and, I mean, it all kind of hinges on that, we'll see. But it's definitely worth picking up. And just throwing in the box and forgetting about it and see what happens. Okay. Um, Dark Horse also has the next Hyperspace Stories book. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to pick this up. It's Ray and Chewbacca on the cover. And I am not a Ray fan. I'm not a fan of the sequel trilogy or whatever. I don't know. Um, game time decision. Dark Horse has Where Monsters Lie, number two. I enjoyed number one. It was creepy, uh, but it was cool, and I like this cover, um, insinuating that there's uh, bones in the in the roots or something like that. It's a cool cover, so and a kind of cool cool story if you like creepy. Yeah, so I I'll probably pick that up. Continue with it. 
Um, Keen Spot puts out this book called Hollowed, and I thought it sounded kind of interesting in the solicitation. So if I, that's a maybe, I might pick that one up. Maybe. And Image puts out Phantom Road. Now I think this is going to be a winner. This is from Jeff Lemire, and everything that he does seems to be good. So, and this is a kind of a cool concept, almost kind of like a uh, post-apocalyptic type thing, maybe, or a zombie type thing, or something. I don't know, something of that ilk, which I'm kind of all in on that stuff. So, definitely will be picking this one up. I totally recommend this one. Um, Action Comics, this is DC. Um, Action Comics 1051 gets a second printing, and normally I don't mess with second prints too much, or multiple prints, but when there's a key involved, and this is key, this is the first appearance of the Super Twins, and uh, yeah, so I'll definitely be picking this one up, and I would recommend, if there's a key issue to a book, second prints are worth it. And... Action Comics 1052 comes out, and I'll be buying this. Let's continue on with this anthology, see what Action Comics has to offer going forward. Okay. Uh, Detective Comics is out from DC, and Action and Detective are just kind of always buys for me, no matter what. I just collect those two titles, whether I'm reading it or not. I am reading Action Comics. I'm not reading Detective right now. Maybe I should. I don't know. It's just kind of, I haven't been too big on this Ram V story with the Orgums. I started reading that one and I kind of faded off of it, so I don't know, we'll see. I'm definitely picking it up, though. Marvel. Um, big, A big second print, if you will, is Miles Morales, number two. No, like I just got done saying, with second prints. I really only recommend them if it's a key issue. And this one is a key. It's the first appearance of Rabble. And uh, this one could be big. I want to show you something in the solicit book. I was going over this last night. And this is the, uh, what you want to call it, the uh, solicitation book. And if I can get this in here right here, this uh, Miles Morales number six. And it says, uh, no matter what, Miles Morales throws at Cletus Cassidy, blah, 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 blah. And it says, yeah, it gets down to it, but Miles can't help. Help isn't coming. The only thing standing between New York City and maximum carnage. And if the heroes aren't answering Miles' calls, who's left on Spidey's speed dial? It's saying who is left on Spidey's speed dial to help him. Could it be Rabble? I always kind of got the impression that Rabble was going to kind of flip and become a, if not anything, an anti-hero to Miles because her origin for being a, a villain in the first place I thought was kind of weak and make an easy turn. So that's kind of what I'm thinking there. Maybe she's the one that's going to end up helping Miles and I think that would be great for her character. So definitely pick up this second print of her first appearance. Make sure you have number one and number two because Renine's first appearance is number one. Who becomes Rabble? First appearance, Rabble, number two. So definitely pick that up. Okay. Um, Cosmic Ghost Rider is out. Um, I'll probably pick this up just for the cool factor. I like the cover. I like the look of the character, but I'm not very high on this character. I'm not really sold on mashup characters that are not original. So Frank Castle, just be the Punisher. You know, be the best version of the Punisher, you know. So I'm not exactly sold on these characters like this. But cool looking character, so yeah, I'll pick it up. And Ghost Rider, number 12, is out. And this is a great read. So looking forward to this one. See, you know, it's a, see what uh, Talia and Johnny and Danny Ketch now involved. See what their, their dynamic's going to be. I really like 
the Talia and Johnny aspect of this story kind of reminds me of Supernatural a little bit. This is a really good read. Looking forward to it. Cool cover. Hollow's Eve number one. And I really like this character. Really original idea with the Halloween masks and stuff. At first, when she first appeared, I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand the whole mask thing, but once I got onto it and figured out what was what her deal was with the Halloween masks and stuff, I really like it. That's a really original, original concept. It's really pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to picking that one up. And, uh, yeah, make sure that you have Amazing Spider-Man number 14, um, the beginning of the Dark Web story. At the beginning of the Dark Web story was her first appearance. Make sure you have that one, because I believe this character is going to stick around. Um, okay, uh, Marvel has I Am Iron Man coming out. I'm not going to pick this up, but I just wanted to put it up here. It's there if you want it. Uh, Marvel's also putting out Rogue and Gambit number one. I'm not going to pick this one up either because I'm just not interested in these offshoot books like this. Um, Spider-Man number six from Dan Slott and Mark Bagley. This is the way over diluted Edge of Spider-Verse stuff. I'm collecting it. I did not read the last issue. I may catch up on it, but I've kind of fizzled out on this one a little bit. But I may pick it back up and start reading. I actually heard the last issue was really good, so maybe I will pick it up. But yeah, this is Spider-Man number six. And a new one coming out called Spider-Man Unforgiven. And it's another one of those. I put it in the category with uh, Spider-Man Craven's Last Hunt or The Last Hunt, or whatever that's going on. I bought a few issues of it, but I'm not reading it, because I like to focus my my uh, my energy on the main title. And I confuse myself if I go out and I read ten titles of one character, so I, I tend to stick to one title. So I may buy this. The cover looks sweet, so I may buy it just on the cover, but I probably will not read it. And Star Wars 32 is out. Um, I'm collecting the main Star Wars line, but I'm not really paying too close of attention to it. But I will buy this one. Same with this one, Hidden Empire. It's in the, it's kind of in the uh, the original trilogy era, which I think is kind of played out. I'm not really interested in learning anything about that era anymore. I'm all 100% in on High Republic at this point. So yeah, but I'll be picking it up. I love all the Star Wars stuff. I really do. And this is a big one. And this is um, High Republic The Blade. Uh, number three. And there are new characters coming in on this. I believe some villainous characters. And give me one second because I wanted to go grab something. Oh, you know what? I will after... No, let me, give me one second, I'm going to be right back. Nope, I can't find it. I can't find what I was looking for. Nope, here it is, right here. I had it right, I had it right in front of me the whole time. Um, what I want to talk about is Porter Angle, who's on the cover. He's, you know, Porter Angle, the Blade of Bardota, is the, you know, the main of this storyline. And... Porter Angle is a, he's a type of a character that lives for centuries, you know, he can live for 400 years or whatever. So he's spanning the entire High Republic. And this is the early High Republic when he was young. His first appearance is in the later High Republic when he was older. And his first appearance is this book. This is... Star Wars The High Republic Adventures um, Annual 2021 and that's his first appearance in comics so that's a really good one to get and the price on this one has really kind of gotten it's over $40 um, fair market value now and I also do have four copies 
of cover B, which has him on the cover. I'll put a screen up that I didn't grab that out of my box. I do have four of them though, but I'll put a I'll put a picture of that up on the screen. So if you can get those, and the cover B one is about thirty dollars. This one's about fifteen dollars more. But certainly, if you can grab those, it's worth it because Porter Angle's a big character. He spans the whole High Republic. Okay. And like I said, this one's apparently going to have a couple new, some new baddies. Who knows? Maybe that, uh, no, I, I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, Marvel's got Venom 17. <clears throat> and I've, I've been a fan of Venom, so yeah, I'll pick it up. Uh, X-Force 38. I haven't been buying anything X-Men or X-Force related, but I thought this cover was kind of cool. And it kind of hinted towards something new be, maybe being introduced in this book when I read the uh, solicit. So who knows? You know, I might pick it up. I might not. This looks like another mashup character. It looks like Domino. I see Deadpool, Beast, um, Cable maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's another mashup maybe. The the Omni, Omni Mutant or something like that. Yeah. Um, Scout Comics, <clears throat> excuse me, Scout Comics has Dead Fellows, which I thought sounded really interesting. It's a number one new issue, and it kind of deals with a very sensitive subject, really. And this kid tries to hang himself, you know, maybe he's bullied or whatever, I don't know. But these ghosts stop him. But what are their intentions, these ghosts? You know, I don't know. It sounded kind of ominous. Definitely could be a good read. Although the, uh, you know, the it's a little sensitive subject there. You know, it's not for everyone, for sure. Uh, it's kind of bold, bold place to go. <clears throat> and that's it. That's all I'm looking at. But uh, I had this, I want to put this up on the screen. I was going through my eBay history as a seller the other day and I joined eBay in 2003 and the reason I joined eBay in 2003 is because I wanted to buy Spider-Man comics <laughs> and this is funny because I saw this where I sold a Spider-Man comic and it's a pretty big Spider-Man comic. I sold and this is probably 2004 or five. Excellent item, excellent seller, excellent transition. A plus 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 plus. Good seller. More than a year ago, yeah, of course. Amazing Spider Man, 300, very fine condition. $26. I sold Amazing Spider Man, 300, a very fine copy. 26 bucks. And that was about almost 20 years ago. Boy, I wish I could take that back, right? But I thought that was pretty funny. <clears throat> I got some other books. <clears throat> I got some other books that I want to show here. And let's go over why I have these out anyway, right? These uh, High Republic books right here. Why do I have these up? I'm going to go over this solicit and, and sh just kind of what's been going on with, with everything High Republic. Um, we have here, uh, talking about the leveler, the nameless terror, the leveler, you know, whatever you want to call it in these solicitations here in this book, the, uh, the nameless or the leveler has been all over the high Republic right now. And then dark horse just put out a series called the nameless terror, which is, that one actually debuted a new cool looking character that I think is going to be an important character called um, Koran Solstice. Young, he's a young Padawan right now in that in that story, but he went on to be a Jedi Master, so he's going to be an important character in that story. <clears throat> that he, his first appearance, yes, is. The Nameless Terror, number one, from Dark Horse. But this right here, and I've actually got 
three copies of number 15. I've got a third one right here, see? So I've got three of those. That's the first appearance, the first full appearance of the leveler. Or the nameless terror, whatever you, whatever they're going to call it. I don't know what, why they keep going back and forth. But uh, yeah, so that is the first appearance. This is a one in twenty-five, and this guy right here has held its value. I initially bought this when this book came out. I bought this one off the shelf for thirty dollars, with the intention because it was listed and selling for about a hundred and twenty-five when I bought it, and I paid thirty bucks for it. And my intention was to flip it and sell it. Well, here it is. Because I just, I can't sell books. I'm a collector. You know, that's, it's just what's inside of me. I just collect. And, uh, yeah, so I still have it. And it's still fair market value. It's around an $80 to $90 book. So it's a really good one to have. This one is about a $10 book right now. But it's going to go higher than that, obviously. Because once this stuff hits, the leveler is everywhere throughout the High Republic, both eras of the High Republic. So yeah, good one to get. And I just wanted to show these off. <clears throat> and this is Strange Academy number one. My Strange Academy number ones. Because as you all know, Strange Academy news there's rumblings right now of Strange Academy being in production. And I think uh, the Sorcerer, um, oh, I can't think of his name right now. Uh, Wong is, is involved. But uh, yeah, so Strange Academy, I cannot wait to hear more on that. That should be. I, I, I've been waiting for this, the the news for that to come out because it's just tailor made, as for a series tailor made. So that's going to cause these things to really. When, once we get concrete news, right now, fair market on cover A of Strange Academy is hovering right around a hundred bucks. Five years from now, when that show is cemented and it's solid, solidly placed, and it's got a fan base, and all the normies come in, this book's going to go bananas. So, even though it's kind of a, a pricey one right now, boy, it's a good, good time to pick up Strange Academy. And I've got every cover A, I've got every issue. So, really happy about that. All right, and you know what, I'll finish off with this because I did pull this book out. Santa Staros is uh, having a series right now. Santa Staros is a Star Wars character, and she has just been Santa Staros number one, came out a couple weeks ago or whatever. And reading the solicitations, she's doing battle with Deva Lompop, who is this character who was... Kind of a, a character to look out for at, a, at one time, a couple years back. And we're now seeing this character put back into, back into circulation, if you will, you know, um, showing up. So where's that going to go? What are we going to do with uh, Star Wars going forward? Or, she's kind of a cool character. She looks cool. This is cover A first appearance. And this is her on the cover, first appearance. It's Job of the Hat, uh, Job of the Hut, War of the Bounty Hunters, number one from a year or two or three ago or something like that. But yeah, I just want to kind of put that out, get a little bit of a mention. But uh, yeah. Oh, I wanted to talk about this one too in the solicit book. This was kind of cool. Um, let me find it. Yeah, right here. <clears throat> Okay, got a big picture of Hulk, and we all know that the uh, current Hulk run is coming to an end after one more issue, and this is annual, Hulk annual number one, and it comes out in May or something like that, and it just says um, a startling new direction for Hulk, so I'm really looking forward to this, 
you know, seeing what this new direction for Hulk is in this annual book. So keep an eye out for that. Definitely one to read and see what that's all about. So that will finish it off. So pretty good, uh, pretty good look ahead this week. We got a big week coming up of books and a little bit of Star Wars news, which is good. And you know that leveler is the leveler, nameless terror, whatever you want to call it, is going to be a big. Um, entity type deal in this new Star Wars stuff with this High Republic so definitely pick that stuff up alright guys well we'll see you on New Comic Book Hall next week and see you then bye for now